you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. I am Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And on today's program, our special business is the subject of energy and momentum, two of the great immutable ideas of physics. And we must make clear their difference. So, for my purpose, I go to the two cars again. You remember what we have in earlier programs? A large, massive car on wheels and a smaller car, little m, on wheels. And they are on the tabletop and they are connected by a sort of elastic connection of rubber bands. Now when I pull them apart, I store some elastic energy in the stretch spring, and there is a force then which is exerted on both cars. Now what did we learn before? We learned that the big car has a little acceleration, and the little car a big acceleration, because one and the same force acts on both cars. Now, we also saw, on another occasion, that the little car acquired the greater velocity and the bigger car the lesser velocity, and we called the product of M and D the momentum. And it is not unreasonable now to say that because the accelerations are inversely as the masses, the velocities are so, and therefore, the momentum of the little car is equal to the momentum of the big car. So their momenta are equal. But now watch. Watch. Is it not true that the smaller car went the greater distance? That is, if I let them come from a place of rest and meet, they would meet somewhere in here. This is the distance the big car would go, and this is the distance the little car would go. So the little car goes the greater distance, s, little s. And now I define for you what is meant by work or energy in physics. The product of a force and a distance. The product of a force and a distance. So, the same force acts on both cars, but for the big car, the distance is a little one. And for the little car, the distance is a big one. And these products are not equal. So we learn this astonishing thing, that although the forces are the same, the accelerations are inversely as the masses, the distances are inversely as the masses, the momenta are equal, but the energies are not. Very important idea. Now this business of energy, beautifully demonstrated as follows. Look what we have here. Here is a curved track, straight and short here, straight and long here. Now this end of the track is at the very same elevation above the tabletop as this end. I have shimmed it up on that end to get it horizontal. And what do we do? We put a ball at the top of this track, at this end. It has so much potential energy, being so high above the zero potential plane, and I let it go. Now it is losing some of its potential energy, gaining kinetic, losing energy, really, because friction is in the system, and we hear sound, which costs the ball something. It cannot produce the acoustic energy for nothing. Now what do some think? that coming down this long track, the ball down here will have enough velocity, enough kinetic energy of motion to put it up over the track here. But that is not so. If the system were absolutely ideal, no friction at all, which is impossible, the best the ball could ever do would be to go to the same height here. And since we are in the real world and friction plays a large role, the ball can never go as high on that end as I let it go from on this end. Watch it. Oh, oh, it did, it did. I'm glad it did because I said it wouldn't. So somebody says, Professor, 
Ah, the experiment failed. No, I think what I have done, I uh, manipulated this end a little improperly so that this end is higher, and therefore it did what it did. So you see, a lesson to be learned. Experiments never fail. I'm going to lower this a little, and now I hope that this end is of the same height as that. Now watch it. Oh, that's it. And less, and less, and less, and less, and less, and so on until the energy of the system is spent in friction and in producing sound and in vibration. <clears throat> a very beautiful demonstration, a device which I call my energy track. Now, let's consider this business of energy further. Here is a block of wood. Here is a nail. I drive the nail into the block of wood. Oh, says somebody, what kind of physics is that? Astonishing physics. Why? I am doing work on the nail. The nail is doing work on the wood to separate its particles. And when work is done, when it is done against friction forces, heat energy always arises. Heat is a necessary consequence of work done against friction. It's proof. I'm going to pull that out. Oh, what do I feel? Too hot, too hot to handle. Accordingly, the work I did on the nail has been commuted to friction. <laughs>